I am Dr. Shoikat. Today I am going to discuss about Tetralogy of Fallot. What is Tetralogy of Fallot? Why is it called Tetralogy of Fallot? Tetralogy of Fallot is the most common cyanotic congenital heart disease and why it is called tetralogy of fallot it is called tetralogy of fallot as because it has four components tetra that's why it is called tetralogy of fallot what are those four components those four components are number one ventricular septal defect number two pulmonary stenosis number three overriding of aorta and number four is right ventricular hypertrophy number one ventricular septal defect number two pulmonary stenosis number three overriding of aorta and number four right ventricular hypertrophy actually we memorize there are four components of tetralogy of fallot but we don't understand what happens inside the heart in tetralogy of fallot So this is the easy diagram of normal heart. Here is right atrium, right ventricle, left atrium and left ventricle. And here is pulmonary valve, here is aortic valve. Now what happens in tetralogy of fallot? So in tetralogy of fallot, there is a large VSD, there is a large VSD, then there is pulmonary stenosis, pulmonary stenosis and there is overriding of aorta overriding of aorta and there is right ventricular hypertrophy so there are four components of tetralogy of fallot number one is VSD, number two is pulmonary stenosis, number three is overriding of aorta, and number four is right ventricular hypertrophy. So, this is what happens inside the heart in tetralogy of fallot. Now, in tetralogy of fallot, if we auscultate, we get loud ejection systolic murmur. Why do we get loud ejection systolic murmur in tetralogy of fallot? In tetralogy of fallot, there are four parts VSD, pulmonary stenosis, overriding of aorta, right ventricular hypertrophy. But among these four components, among these four parts, only VSD and pulmonary stenosis are important for getting any murmur. But in tetralogy of fallot, this VSD is large enough. As it is large enough, the blood can flow from right ventricle to left ventricle or left ventricle to right ventricle very easily, spontaneously. As there is large VSD, there is actually no pressure gradient. As it is large VSD, blood can flow easily, spontaneously. That's why there is no pressure gradient. As there is no pressure gradient, there is a equal pressure. There is equal pressure among this left ventricle and right ventricle. That's why this VSD is neutral. That's why this VSD doesn't produce any murmur. Only pulmonary stenosis plays a role in producing murmur. That's why this pulmonary stenosis causes loud ejection systolic murmur. So in tetralogy of fallot, 
loud ejection systolic murmur is always due to pulmonary stenosis not due to ventricular septal defect as because in tetralogy of fallot vsd is large enough as it is large enough it makes no pressure gradient and pressure is actually equal in both chambers that's why only pulmonary stenosis plays role in producing murmur that's why there is loud ejection systolic murmur so this is a gross idea of tetralogy of fallot in my next video i may continue with the details of this description and I may continue with the treatment, investigations, treatment and other things. Thank you.